Hey guys, so right now I'm going to be going over um, functions lab one, uh, solutions for problem two. Um, so this is giving us a couple different functions and then we are um, trying to see what's going to happen when we're given specific values to be inputted into our function. Um, so if we start with 2.1, I've already put it in here, we have um, the function foo. It takes one input. Uh, which will be an integer, and it's going to return an integer to us, which we can see our return type here, um, our input here, and then what's going to be returned down here. Um, so if we call foo, and if we put in 47, um, we know that um, we can kind of figure out what's going to be outputted without even having to call it um, just by seeing what's happening. So if, when we call foo, it's going to input 47, so now our input a, our integer a, is going to be equal to 47. So then we come into the code here, and what's going to be returned to us is 47 modulo 10, um, which we know from foundations to programming that that's going to give us back the answer 7. So we can run that and double check, and we can see it's 7. Um, so now if we want to see 283, we'll do the same thing as what's going to happen with 47, we're going to call foo. Um, this integer a is now going to be equal to 283. And 283 modulo 10 is going to be equal to 3. So you can see that down here. And then if we replace this with a um, 0, we're going to get back the input 0. a is going to be equal to 0. 0 modulo 10 will be 0. So we can um, call this many different times with all of the inputs actually and kind of see what's going to happen. I'll fix some of my spacing. So we've got 47, 283, and I'll print them all on new lines. So now when we run this, we can see all of our outputs down here, 7, 3, and 0. Um, so this local variable a um, is being reinitialized every time we call the function foo, um, and it will be um, equal to whatever input we're telling it to be equal to, um, and then it's going to do whatever code we, we wrote in this function in between these two curly brackets, and then it's going to return a specific integer to us. Um, so it's kind of the basics of what's happening um, for this problem. So if we go on to 2.2, we've got this new function. called bar. We can see bar is taking in one input a and that input needs to be an integer and then it's going to return an integer to us. So now we can come in here and we can call bar um, with our first input 47. Um, and by printing this, it's just allowing us to see what the output is going to be. So we could just call it and put our inputs in, but it's we're not telling anything to be done with these um, inputs. So by printing it, we're, it's just allowing us to see what's um, what the output is going to be. Um, so we know that um, a is now going to equal 47. Um, and this is a local variable for bar. So we've got an integer a for foo, and we've got a local or a local integer a for bar. Um, but these are actually two separate variables. They're not um, they're not related in any way. So every time we call foo, we have a new integer a that's being initialized, and we've every time we call bar, we have a new integer a that's being initialized as well. Um, so we can call bar with this um, integer, or with the integer 47, it'll be in inserted into this local variable a, and then that variable a can only be used within that function. So the a in here um, is not related to this a, because they're sep they, they can only use their local variables within their own function. Um, so we've got this integer a, it'll be equal to 47, uh, 47 divided by 10, is going to equal to 4. And when we run that, we can see that right down here. And I'll just print a bit of a space just so we can kind of see what's happening. Here we 
there we go, that gives us a bit of a spacing in between each problem. Um, so now we can run this again with our, with our next input, which is 283. So we know that 283 is gonna um, be, or we're gonna call bar with the input 283. Um, so we'll do 283 divided by 10 is gonna be equal to 28. We can check that right down here. 28, that's all correct. And then our last input is zero. Zero is gonna be into, uh, we're gonna call bar where you're going to give it the input of zero. So now A is equal to zero. Uh, 0 divided by 10 um, is going to give us the solution of 0. And we can see that right down here. So now let's take a look at our last function. So now I've got a bit more of a complicated function called chi. All right, we can see that down here. Um, I'll actually just put it right at the top so we can see it a bit better. There we go. So now if we call chi with our first input 47, we're gonna call chi, we're gonna give it the input 47. So now this local variable a is gonna be equal to 47. And remember this a has no relation to um, these other integer a's because it's a local variable it can only be used within its own function um, so now a is going to be equal to 47 and then we've got a new uh, variable being initialized as well and this is also a local variable um, it's going to be an integer called b and we're going to call foo a um, so we're going to we know that our a is equal to 47 um, so we come down here uh, we're going to call foo with 47 so we know that foo 47 was equal to seven, so we're gonna be returned seven. So now b, we can write that here. We know that b is gonna be equal to seven. And then if b is less than five, we're gonna return something else. We're gonna return something else. Um, so we know that b is not less than five, so we're gonna return whatever this else is, um, which is a, which we know from up here is 47 minus b, which is seven, plus 10. Uh, so the value that should be returned to us should be 50. And we can see that right here. So again, I know these kind of get, start to get a bit complicated, but just writing out um, some different comments or writing out on a piece of paper what's going on is really helpful. So now we'll do this again with, um, what was it, 283? So we come into here and we know that A is gonna be equal to 283. And then we're, we know that B is gonna be equal to foo of A, which is 283. So we know that foo of 283 is gonna be equal to three. So we know that B will be equal to three. And B is less than five, so we're gonna return 283 minus 3. So we should get back the value 280. We can run that and check, and we're correct. So our last one is trying it out with 0. We'll delete all these comments. So we'll start, we know that zero, we're going to call chi with the input 0. So now a is going to be equal to 0. B is going to be equal to foo, 0, which we know is equal to 0. So when we come down here and call foo with 0, it'll return to us 0. Um, and 0 is less than 5, so we're going to be given 0 minus 0, which will be equal to 0. So we should get the value 0 returned to us. And we do. Um, so this is just one way you can kind of test out different functions and see what is being returned to them. Um, again, if you are struggling with any of this or you don't know what's going on, try using the debugger. So like for example, we can come on here and um, we'll just put a breakpoint on um, each of the uh, inputs of 47 to kind of see what's happening. 
So let's see if this works. So we can run this. So we're first halted at um, our first breakpoint. And then we'll see. Well, we kind of jumped from there. Let's instead. Uh, actually, let's try stepping into instead. So we'll run this. Oh, that's not working, is it? Let's instead put this into an integer n. Same with these ones. So this is just me giving random integer values so we can actually use the debugger and see what's happening. All right, so let's fix our breakpoints. And then we'll put a breakpoint value on each of the return as well. All right, let's try this again. So we can run this. We're halted at this first integer m. We'll step in, so now we call foo. So we go into foo. Um, and we can see that it's coming into here. And then we step back up here and then go to, oh, I see now, now we can go into the functions. Um, so we'll just continue to our next breakpoint, which is n. And then we hit this n and we're gonna call bar 47. So now we should jump into 40, or our bar function. You can see we're gonna jump into here We'll continue out of it. We now hit this integer L, and we're going to call chi of 47. We now, there we go, we now jump into chi. And uh, as we knew from before, we hit this else return value, so that's why we're skipping this return value, and we're jumping down to this return value. So you can use the debugger as kind of a way to um, see what's going on. Um, just mess around with the debugger a bit, but just make sure you're stepping into the functions to kind of help you understand what's going on. Um, so hopefully this helped you guys.